Just wave your hands and worship.
will be alive to you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to do something for me. As you are connecting, make sure you are sharing. As you are connecting, start a watch party. As you are connecting, invite your friends, invite your family, invite your relatives. Because tonight is going to be a powerful night. Without wasting our time, I want to bring straight on to the platform the man of God that God has prepared for today. I know it's going to be a night that God will speak directly to your situation. The uncommon message of the Lord will utter a word, a word for your life. I mean for you. I mean for you. I mean for your destiny. I mean for your family. I mean for your marriage. I mean for your business. You will hear God distinctly. And I want to say that be prepared tonight. Be prepared. Be prepared. Because you will hear the word of God. As I bring to this platform, our Father whom God has prepared for tonight is ever ready to deliver the word of God unto God's people. As I bring unto this platform, Pastor Oladili, God bless you, sir, as you speak, sir. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. I want to welcome you, children of God, to another day in His presence. We have been on the journey together. Today is the 23rd of the 30, uh, 20 uncommon, uh, 20 night of uh, uncommon mercy. We have started the journey together. We have just one week to go, and the Lord Jesus is here tonight to show you uncommon mercy. And I pray that after today's administration. Your life will not remain the same again in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you for a time like this in your presence. Father, we want to bless you. Daddy, we want to appreciate you. Thank because you are not tired of blessing us. Every day, every minute, every second, you are there to bless us. To akin not our voice. To shower your blessing and your miracle upon as many that believe. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for what you are going to do tonight. Because you are going to deliver us all from hell. You are going to deliver us all from, from destruction, from perdition. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you are going to do. Receive our praise and adoration in the name of Jesus. As many that we partake of today's telecast, I pray that the Holy Spirit of the Lord will rest upon you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. And the favor of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord will locate you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We pray that you empower your word and it brings salvation, healings, deliverance to as many that are listening and believe. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, the word of God is coming right to you at the comfort of your home. And the word the Holy Spirit has sent me to give to you tonight is to share with you what Jesus can do for you. He has done it in the past. He is doing it now. And he will continue to do it in the life of those that believe. In the life of those that believe. If you have your Bible with you, can you please turn your Bible with me to the book of Luke? I want to share the story of a woman with you there. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, chapter 8. Chapter 8. I'm reading verse 1 and 2. Sometimes later, Jesus traveled through towns and villages, preaching the good news about the kingdom of God. The twelve disciples went with him. Verse 2. And so did some women who have been ill of evil spirit and diseases follow him. One of them is Mary, who was called Magdalene, from whom seven Demons has been drive out. So my emphasis tonight is on the Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene happened to be one of the followers or disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before she became a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible said that he was possessed with evil spirit. Not only that, he was, inflict, he was afflicted, she was afflicted with diseases. And Jesus now deliver her, deliver her of 
those sickness and diseases and drove out the evil spirit in her. The Bible even mentions specifically the number of demons that, demon that she possessed, from whom seven demons have been driven out. Seven demons. So he was a, an, she was an high rank officer in the kingdom of Satan and later became Jesus' disciple. Where am I going? Jesus has many followers, many followers during his earthly ministry. As the Bible recorded here that when he traveled from towns to city, from villages, preaching the good news of the kingdom, the 12 disciples went with him and other followers. Jesus has thousands of followers. Out of these thousands of followers, the Bible mentions 500 of them that he appeared to. 500 he appeared to. In 1 Corinthians, I want you to read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. It is a privilege that 500 was singled out. Out of thousands of followers, he singled out 500. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading verse 6. Verse 6. Then he appeared to more than 500 of his followers at once, most of whom were still alive, although some have died. So, out of thousands, 500 here was privileged, was favored to see Jesus after his resurrection. He appeared to them physically. They saw, they saw him. They saw him. They saw the risen Jesus. 500. Now, out of these 500, 120 or so were singled out. Out of that, the Bible recorded the 120 disciples that are more closer than the other 500. Out of this 120, we have another 12 called the apostles that are very close to Jesus. Anywhere Jesus is, the 12 are there. When we don't see the other 500, when we don't see the other 120, we have the 12 there. Do you know out of these 12 disciples, we have three, three of them that are even different from others. The way Jesus did with this theory is different from the way he did with others. Theory. Some of us are Bible students, we know the name of those theory. We know the name of the name of the the name of the twelve who are in the Bible, the twelve apostles. I'm not going there tonight because of our time. Then we have the theory that are close associate of close associate of Jesus Christ. We are talking about Peter, James, and John. Very close to Jesus. Out of this theory, we have another one that is more closer that is called the beloved. That's John. John the beloved. When others have been, when others die of uh, persecution, eh, that they have been martyred. Only John the beloved died a natural death. The beloved. Now, look at the numbers of followers that Jesus had. And this woman, this woman, Maria, Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene was singled out among other women. We have other women that are singled out, but what I want to lay emphasis on, on this woman, is the uncommon mercy that she received. Having dined and wine with Satan for many years, having dined and wine with devil, working for devil, I know, I know for sure Mary Magdalene might have sent many people to hellfire, killing them, <laughs> killing them. Now, he met Jesus, she met Jesus Christ, she gave her life to Jesus Christ, and became a follower of Jesus Christ. The, what I want to lay emphasis on tonight is she, 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 she even saw Jesus before the apostles. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Mary Magdalene, the former evil possessed woman, was, saw Jesus before the disciples. That's uncommon mercy. He, that, he, she received that mercy uh, uh, beyond measure, beyond measure, uncommon mercy. Let me just show you that. Matthew chapter 28, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28, verse 1. I'm reading verse 1. After the Sabbath on Sunday morning was drawing, uh, sorry, after the Sabbath as Sunday morning was drawing, Mary Magdalene, that's the woman that have seven demons, <laughs> seven demons. And the other Marys went to look at the to, to look at the tomb. Then I want to jump to verse 9 because of our time. Now, 
went to so suddenly Jesus met them and said, Peace be unto you. And they came up to him, took hold of his feet, and worshiped him. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them, Go and tell my brother to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. What am I saying? Mary, Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, that evil possessed woman saw Jesus even before others, the 12 apostles. She now become, she became a, 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 an evangelist. I, 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 I tie to her the first lady evangelist in the New Testament. The first lady evangelist. See, he saw Jesus after resurrection, even before the so-called apostle, even, bef even before John the Beloved. Can you see that mercy? Can you see that uncommon mercy? Uncommon mercy. Opportunity. He saw Jesus. She saw Jesus before John the Baptist. Before John the Beloved. He saw Jesus before Peter and James. He saw Jesus before other, uh, other, other apostles. That is uncommon mercy. Look at how terrible the sin of this woman. Look at how terrible. Look at how deep he has, he has went with, with Satan. And Jesus now saved her. The same word of salvation is coming to you to, tonight. I don't know how far you have gone <laughs> in, 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 in being antichrist. Maybe you are a member of a occult society. Maybe you have involved in diabolic uh, 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 practices. Jesus is stretching a hand of fellowship to you tonight. He's showing you uncommon mercy to save you and to wipe away all your past and ugly, ugly past, to wipe them away and turn you to a new person. As he turned Mary Magdalene, the woman with seven demons, to, an, to a great evangelist. Who saw she saw Jesus before the so-called apostles? Let me show you another story of another um, um, another man in the Bible that received the same uncommon mercy to be saved after spending their life doing evil, doing evil, committing crimes, sending souls to hellfire, destroying lives, and they received the uncommon mercy of the Lord and they were saved. In Luke, Gospel of Jesus Christ, according to Saint Luke. Luke chapter 23. Luke 23. I'm reading from verse 32. Luke 23, verse 32. The uncommon mercy of the Lord. Yes. Two other men, both of them criminals, were also led out to be put to death with Jesus. Criminals. When they came to the place called the score, they crucified Jesus there, and the two criminals, one on the right hand, the other on his left hand side. So Jesus was in between the two criminals. Now jump to verse 33, the same chapter. Verse 39 now. Verse 39. One of the criminals hung there, all insult at him. Yes. At Jesus Christ. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and horse. Verse 40. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? You receive the same sentence he did. 41. Ours, however, is only right because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. 42. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Remember me in your kingdom. The last verse, verse 43. Verse 43. Jesus said unto him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a wonderful mercy. What a wonderful mercy. This man committed sin to the point of death. The Bible called him a criminal, evildoer. King James Version called it a male factor. A criminal, chronic one. He committed sin to the point of death. 
just few minutes to his last to his to, to, to death he now said to jesus remember me when you come as king remember me in your kingdom and jesus now look at him and said today 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 you will be with me in paradise you may maybe you don't know the meaning of what i'm saying this man did not did not involve in any evangelical <laughs> exercise no tithe no offering no vigi <laughs> no vigi he doesn't give any harms no opposite or opposite or, 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 uh, he didn't he didn't show any uh, hospitality to anybody he did no any any good work at all he contributed nothing to the body of christ nothing to the temple he was all his life committing crime all his life you don't know that that's uncommon mercy uncommon mercy the same mercy is knocking at your door tonight i don't know how terrible your life may be i don't know the type of sin you have committed in the past but jesus is a merciful god he is not interested in the death of any sinner but that all sinners may come to repentance that all sinners may come to repentance the first person i told you that woman mary magdalene the woman with seven chronic demons seven terrible demons jesus saved her and make her an evangelist not only that she was privileged to saw jesus even before the so-called apostles he now gave them the news that jesus has risen they were even doubting her no 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 it's, it's not possible he said, i saw her i saw him i even hold his feet i hold his feet i saw him i saw him so jesus revealed himself to her before the apostles it's uncommon mercy the same jesus saved this man at the point of death and he was with jesus in paradise that day few 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 minutes later he gave up the ghost and he was with jesus without doing any good work no any good work on his record than believing and confessing jesus as lord he, jesus is king that jesus is sinless jesus committed no sin he recognized whom jesus is if you also can submit to the to, to the lordship of the lord jesus christ he's ready to save you and and decorate your life what, 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 what type of decoration can you compare with somebody being in paradise with Jesus Christ? What type of decoration can you be? Can you compare with a woman with seven chronic demons now becoming a favorite of Jesus Christ? Look at that uncommon mercy. The same mercy will locate you tonight and save you in the name of Jesus. No matter how terrible, no matter how worse your sin may be he will save you in the name of jesus let me quickly go to the to the third person then we know we, then we pray this one is found in the old testament i've give you two in the new testament let me just give you another one in the old testament then we pray on common mercy that saved terrible sinners and decorate them and make something good out of their worst life in the book of joshua where the book of Joshua, chapter 6. Joshua, chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse uh, 21. Joshua, chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 21. Yes. With their sword, they kill everyone in the city, men and women, young and old. They also kill the cattle, the sheep, and the donkeys. They destroyed everything. Verse 22. Joshua then, to, Joshua then told the two men who are served as spies, go into the prostitute house. Please underline that word. Prostitute. Harlot. Mm. Go to the prostitute house and bring her and her family out as you promised her. So they went and brought Rahab out along with her father and, and her mother, her brother, and the rest of her family. They took them all, family and slave, to safety near the Israelite camp. 24 now. Then they set fire 
to the city and burn it to the ground along with everything in it except the things made of gold, silver, bronze, and iron, which they took and put in the Lord treasury. 25, where I want to stop. But Joshua spared the life of prostitute. Look at the title. <laughs> Look at the title. He saved the life of prostitute Rahab. Some people are doctor. Some people are engineer. But this woman profession, his own title is prostitute Rahab. And all her relatives, because she had hidden the two spies that he had sent to Jericho. Her descendants have lived in Israel to this day. <laughs> now she your naturalization. He naturalized from being a man, from being a Jericho citizenship to Israelite citizenship. Look at that. Now I want you to look at something. The, the uncommon mercy there. Uncommon mercy. Everything in Jericho was destroyed. They were set on fire. Everything. Everything. Verse 24. They set, then they set fire to the city and burned it to the ground. Everything. Everything in the city of Jericho they destroyed. Both woman and animal. Properties. That what billions of dollars or pounds, just name it anything, they burn it down. But this woman, this woman that is very good in her feed, prostitute Rahab, was saved along with his family members. With his family members. Don't you see, you, you, don't, you don't consider that as uncommon mercy? For so, just one family to be saved out of the entire city. Entire city. Only Rahab and his family was spared. And they destroyed others. That was not the end of the mercy that Rahab received. She was naturalized and became an Israelite. Not that they just set, not, not that they just set her free and sent her away. No, 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 no. No, no, no. They, they, they went ahead to make her a, an Israelite. An Israelite. Somebody that's supposed to die. Somebody that is not worthy, unworthy prostitute. Became an Israelite. It doesn't end here. I'm talking about uncommon mercy. Uncommon mercy. It does not end there. It went further. After became, becoming an, an Israelite uh, citizen, she was so fortunate to be in uh, the, the great grandmother of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at that mercy. A prostitute. Can any, two, any good thing come out of a prostitute? Who we ever thought that she, could, she, 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 she can get such a privilege? Let me show you. In Matthew chapter, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. The whole book of uh, chapter 1 from verse, uh, chap uh, uh, Matthew chapter 1 from verse 1 was about the genealogy of uh, Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to read from verse 1. I will only read verse 5. Where uh, Rehab, uh, Rehab, where, where Rehab uh, name was mentioned. Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. That's where I will just uh, read because of our time. Sorry for delaying. Let me go to the King James Version. I want to read from King James Version. Okay, Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. And Shalom began both of Rahab, and both began Obed of Ruth, and Obed began Jesse. So, from verse 1, they were talking about the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Let me read verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now they now mention. In verse 1 now, look at Rehab was mentioned there. Rehab the harlot. Rehab the harlot. He has no any other business during her lifetime before, uh, before, uh, 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 before, the, before he was 
saved and rescued from destruction. She practices harlotry, a prostitute, a prostitute. She was saved, that's number one, became an Israelite, that's number two. Then she became the great grandmother of Jesus Christ. What uncommon mercy. The same thing can come out of your life. The same thing can come out of your life. Even when, when, when it was told that to, 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 to Nathan that uh, uh, come and see Jesus of Nazareth, Nathan said, can any good things come out of Nazareth? Maybe people also are thinking that there's nothing good that can come out of your life. But I'm telling you tonight that the uncommon mercy of the Lord can make greater things, not just something, greater things come out of your miserable life. Yes. You, if, if you are the second in command to, 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 to the devil, if you are the head of all the wishes in the United Kingdom or in the European continent, if you are one of the wizards, I don't know what you have become or what, what you have involved yourself in. You are not as worse as those people have mentioned. You are not as worse as Mary Magdalene. You are not as worse as the criminal that was named in, on the cross with Jesus Christ. You are not as worse as a lot or prostitute Arab. Arab. That's, what they, that's how they wrote his name there. Prostitute Arab. And these people receive the uncommon mercy of their Lord and something good, something great come out of their life. The same thing will happen in your life tonight if you can accept Jesus the way these people, those people accept Jesus to their life. There are two things that Rehab did and other people there do. I may not be able to point to all the, the three of them, but let me just lay emphasis on that of Rehab. Number one, Rehab is a woman of faith. It's a woman of faith. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 31 recorded her faith that he knew, he has faith in the God of the spies. When you read uh, Joshua chapter 2, from verse 8 to 21, you see a confession about the God of Israel. You see a confession. He has faith. He has faith in the God of the two spies. And now, he now told them that I will spare your life. Please, will you also spare my life because I know that the Lord has given you this land. So, he had faith in the God of Israelites. He had faith in the God of Israel. Because of our faith, he was saved. He was saved. So if you also can have faith in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, you will be saved. Not only you will be saved, you and the entire members of your family. You and the entire members. Look, at because when Rehab was doing it, it was only Rehab that was doing that good, good thing. It was only Rehab that had the faith. Only Rehab. But he pleaded for every member of his family in Joshua chapter 2. Let's read there, Joshua chapter 2. I still have a few minutes before we pray. Joshua chapter 2. I want to read verse 11. Verse 11. But when you want to understand that story very well, you read the whole of chapter 2 from verse 1 to 21. You understand what I'm saying very well. But I just want to read verse 11 here about it. Say, we were afraid as soon as we heard about it. We have also lost our courage because of you. The, the Lord your God is God in heaven, above and here on earth. Look at, look at our faith in the God of Israel. Say, we lost our courage because we know your God is God in heaven above and God on earth. So he confessed the God of Israel as God. That's our faith. That was safe. And he now pleaded for herself and for her family. Promise me, verse 13, promise me that you will save my father, my mother, my brother, my sister, and all their family. Don't let us be killed. He pleaded for them because he had faith. And that which he asked was given to her. Whatsoever you will ask, we hope you open your mouth to ask from this Jesus tonight, he will do it for you in the name of Jesus. He asks with his mouth. This is what I want from you. Because I know your God. I know what your God is capable of doing. 
and they gave it to they gave it to her. The, only, the, 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 the jailer that was with Paul and Sila in Acts of Apostles chapter 16. In Acts of Apostles chapter 16. Let me read that also. I want to read that. It's a very good place that you need to read or note in your Bible. Acts of Apostles chapter 16 verse 30 and 31. Look at what the, look at what that man said. Then then he led them out and asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? It's a question. And Paul and Silas answer. They, and they answer, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your family. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your family. As many of you that are listening to me tonight, if you can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the uncommon mercy of the Lord will save you and save every members of your family from any predicament you may, be, you, you may be in, from any difficulty or problem you may be in. But the first thing it will do is to save your soul. After saving your soul, it will save your life. It will save your body. He will save your spirit. He will do those three things. He will not only save your spirit and leave the body and soul to be tormented. No, he will save both your spirit, your soul, and your body. And everything that belongs to you, they will be saved. Anything you put in the hands of the Lord is secured and is saved. You can, you can be rest assured of what I'm telling you now. Just believe in Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. The second thing that these three people did, the, the criminal, Mary Magdalene, and uh, prostitute Arab, apart from faith in Jesus, is they also did something. They received him. They received him. They received him. So if you don't receive him, the Bible says, as many as receive him, to them give power to become children of God. To them receive him. So when you don't receive him, you cannot receive that uncommon mercy. You cannot. But when you receive him, then you will receive that uncommon mercy. In James, James, also, James, let me read there. James chapter 2 verse 25. It's talking about work. That's the work that you need to do for you to receive that uncommon mercy. James chapter 2. I'm reading verse 25. James 2, 25. Listen. It was, the, it was the same with prostitute Rahab. She was put right with God through her action by welcoming the Israelite spies and helped them to escape by a different road or different route. That's the work he did. He did something. He received. He received the spies. Kept them save their life, then they in turn save our own life and every member of his family. So you also need to receive Jesus. When you receive Jesus, you receive his spirit and you kept the spirit in your heart. You allow the spirit of God to dwell in you. For the Bible says, as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are the children of God. So after receiving him, then you allow his spirit to dwell in you and you keep it to control you, to teach you, to guide you, then you receive the uncommon mercy in fullness. In fullness. Don't forget, no matter your condition, no matter how worse your past, no matter how terrible your past, Jesus and of fellowship is able to save you. In Isaiah, let me just read that, then we pray. Isaiah chapter 1. So I don't want you to condemn yourself. Don't condemn yourself. Don't listen to the voice of the devil that tell you, you <laughs> your own case is terrible. No, 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 no. There is no case that is terrible that cannot be saved. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Listen. The Lord said, Now, let's settle the matter. You are stained red with sin, but I will wash you as clean as snow. <laughs> So if you are so, your sin is so, your hand is full of blood. Your hand is full of blood. The Bible says it will make you clean as snow. 
as that red will turn to as white as snow. Again, say, although your stain are deep red, you will be as white as wool. That is the that is the power of God to change a sinner, to comfort a sinner, hmm? to reshape a sinner. So no matter how terrible your sin, no matter how dirty your past, the grace of God is there to wash you. The grace of God is there to save you. The grace of God is there to deliver you. If you can only surrender unto him. If you can only surrender. And I want to tell you, the moment you give your life to Christ, everything will now become new. Everything about you. Where you are recording failure before, no more failure. Where you have been rejected before, no, they will celebrate you. All disappointment now will turn to an appointment. That is what will happen. The moment you accept him to your life. The moment you accept him to your life. Today is your day of salvation. Don't let, don't delay it tomorrow. And as you take the first, as you take the step of faith to take, to accept Jesus to your life, I tell you everything will turn around. He will decorate your life. Your business will boom. <laughs> your academic will receive success. Everything about you will just become new. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. Behold, everything becomes new. All things pass away. That ugly, ugly experience, sickness pass away. Yes. It pass away. Dejection pass away. Anything that is negativity in your life, it pass away. Everything become positive. Bow down your heads and let us pray. Today is the day of repentance. Today is the day of salvation. Today is a day of repentance. Today is a day of salvation. If we you delay, tomorrow may be late. If we you delay, Tomorrow may be late. If you delay, tomorrow may be late. There is danger if you delay. I want you to confess your sin to the Lord right now. All the known and unknown sin. Confess it to the Lord Jesus Christ. When you confess your sin and you forsake it, is ready to receive you to his kingdom. No, ni ni
Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day of salvation. Why not submit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and let him beautify your life? Let him beautify your life. Let him change your title. He changed the title of Rahab from prostitute Arab to Saint Rahab, <laughs> mother of Jesus Christ. He will do the same in your life if you surrender to him. He will beautify your life. He will beautify your life. I want you to say, Lord, I'm sorry for all my past mistakes. I'm sorry for my past behaviors. I'm sorry for the past involvement with the occultic world. Yes, I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Wash me with your precious blood. Plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I pray that the blood of Jesus will wash away all your sin. In the name of Jesus. And make you white as snow. In the name of Jesus. Make you white as snow. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me pray it for you. The, mercy, the uncommon mercy of the Lord will transform your life and everything that pertains to you. As Rahab was saved with all his family members. So I say you are saved with all that pertains to you. Your vocation, your business is saved. Your body is saved from sickness, from diseases, from oppression. In the name of Jesus, no more nightmare. In the name of Jesus, no more failure. In the name of Jesus, no more disappointment. In the name of Jesus, no more jobless. In the mighty name of Jesus, because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, everything pertaining to you turns to new. In the name of Jesus, continue to experience new things, new life, new life, new breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I pray that the grace of the Lord will sustain you up to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will, with, you, you will reign with him in his glory in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will make you a pillar in his kingdom as Mary Magdalene was a pillar during, his, during Jesus' earthly ministry and was an evangelist to the, plus, to, to, to the last day of his life, of her life. So you will be a pillar in the body of Christ. Eh? You will be a light eh? in this world of darkness. Eh? You will be herald of the gospel in the name of God. The Lord will use you mightily to save many to save as many that are lost, eh? in the name of Jesus, and to awaken people that are slumbering, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And from today, the glory of the Lord will radiate on your life. People will see, they see new glory in you. They will see new glory, in the name of Jesus. Eh? And they will ask you, how, how do you make it? What, what, is your, what is your secret? And you will tell them, my secret is Jesus. Since I've received Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, everything turn around. Everything turn around. And that will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. He has given you a power after receiving him as your Lord and personal Savior. The Holy Spirit of the Lord is in you now. You can now command the devil. Just say, just call that in the name of Jesus. Satan will fall. Devil will fall. Demon will fall. Powers and principality will fall before you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Our God is good. Our God is good. You know, tonight we came with a new, a new, a new version. You know, and that is one thing about God. God is not monotonous. His way is different from our ways. How it works, we don't know. So he can decide that tonight will be a night for you to take the first step before you enjoy the uncommon mercy of God. You can see how our Father and the Lord analyzed all the people before they received this uncommon mercy. Jesus called them first. They, be, they, they, were, they, were, they were repositioned. They, 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 they were accepted. They came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they now have heritage in God. For you to have uncommon mercy of God, for you to enjoy it, for you to stay under that canopy for life, 
You need to be part of the kingdom. You need to surrender your life. And I want to congratulate anyone that has given his life or you rededicate your life tonight. I know heaven is celebrating. I know God, heaven is rejoicing. I know the angels of the Lord are saying, Welcome into the big family. You and I, we have now become brothers and sisters. So I welcome you into the family of God. This is so good. It's more beneficial than any other thing that we can do in life. The Bible says, What shall it profit a man to receive the whole world, to gain the whole wide world, and loses his soul? Say, What shall he put as an exchange? So, this message tonight is so important. It's so important to you. It's so important to your family. One of the key things that I gained tonight was that the, the Rayab step was able to save all our family members. The step she took, the step she took, she was three things I know were identified. Number one, she was accepted as what? As she was saved, number one. Number two, she was accepted to become an Israelite. Number three, she now became the grand grandmother of Jesus Christ. What a privilege for you to enjoy uncommon mercy of God. You need to take the first step by running to Christ, by surrendering your life, by hands up and say, Lord, here I am. I am here. I can run after vanity again. Because if you run after vanity, you get nothing. But if you run towards him, if you run to Christ, you have everything. The Bible told us in the book of Psalm 24, it said the head is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood. Say who shall come to the ears of the Lord, or who shall stand in his place? Those who are the clean hand and the pure heart, those who have not lifted up their soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. The Bible says they shall receive blessing from the God of his salvation. He now says, this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. He declares something, he says, lift up your head. That is uncommon mercy, O ye gate. Because you have come to the Lord for us, every gate, every door, we open on their own accord for you, for your family, for your business, for every endeavor of yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What a mighty and powerful night. Oh my God, I, I am so blessed. I have been blessed. And the blessing is, is a kind of moving in, in, my, in my life, in my tummy. It was as if I have ate something that is beyond natural. And that is just the fact. Something that we have received tonight is beyond natural. It's beyond something that we can see. But the glory of God has come upon our life. Before we close tonight, don't forget, you know, on last week Thursday, the man of God came and you know, there was a divine instruction that we should give uh, an offering tagged seed of mercy. And we have it on our platform. If you look down, you will see seed of mercy, kingdom palace outreach. That is our account number and the short code. You can as the Lord helps you, as the Lord prosper you. You know, you can give into this account you know, as a seed of mercy. You know, we are not saying if you don't give, you won't encounter mercy. But this is the instruction of God. And we encourage you to do that. Tomorrow we are coming again. And I, I, I said something yesterday that you should make a, a, a decision to always be here every night. Listen to me. Make sure next week, Tuesday, we're going to round everything up. Next week, Tuesday, is going to be the end of this 30 prophetic night of uncommon mercy. But I want you to know that even after that program, your life will, will have taken a leap into the new glory, new season, new blessing, new wonders, new testimony, new breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please don't forget, 7 p.m. tomorrow, connect with us as you connect, share it, start a word party, and let's propagate the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ together. And it shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'll be expecting you tomorrow by the grace of God. So don't be late because God is waiting for you. Jesus Christ is waiting for you. Holy Spirit is waiting for you. The one who bless your life. The one who bless your family. The one who bless your work. 
and so shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just share the grace together as we round up tonight. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Point to yourself. I always want you to do that every night. Point to yourself and say, Surely, Surely His goodness, his and, goodness mercy and mercy shall follow, shall follow me all the days, days of my life, and I shall I dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for connecting tonight. I'll be expecting you same time tomorrow, 7 p.m. May the Lord bless you and your household. In, In the, the name, name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.